Hey YouTube students, this is GED teacher Damon Tennant and in this video we are continuing with our monthly subject. Uh, we're looking at solving for X. So just a quick question, what are you doing around these kinds of questions? How do you study? How do you prepare? Go ahead and shoot me a little note there uh, in the comment section uh, and I'll get back with you with just with some thoughts on maybe how to enhance what you're already doing um, and maybe some other tips and tools that uh, could assist uh, as you prepare for this specific subject for the GED math test. Uh, but in this week's video, what we're going to do is we're going to go to intermediate. So if you look at the video from the previous week, you know, we're looking at the basic solving for X. Now let's go ahead and jump in to intermediate. So here we are with a couple of problems, and so we're going to dive in and do them, of course. Uh, but these are intermediate problems, meaning that you have to have a little bit more knowledge about solving for X uh, to get these problems right. Um, it's very basic when it comes down to it, but there again, you need to have it. So we're going to look at these intermediate problems here. So let me just rewrite number one just so it's a little bit bigger here on the screen. And actually, I'm going to move it a little bit closer just so I have space for the second problem here. So, we have x over 7 plus 27 equals 33. So now, you know, most people, if you haven't been doing this work, they're stuck what to do with this part. You kind of maybe know what to do with that part, but, you know, just trying to figure out what to do with this part. And so, remember... Anytime we're working on these problems, we're, we're solving for X. And so we're trying to get down here, X equals something. And so we're always doing our COPA method, which is combine like terms, do the opposite, perform the operation and get your answer. And so are there any like terms we can combine? Absolutely. So we're just going to um, highlight these like terms. So 27 and 33, they're not the same but they're alike, and then that number, x over 7, is, uh, of course, um, uh, doesn't have any common numbers here. So when we're doing our opposite, we're going to combine our like terms by doing the opposite. So this plus 27, so we're going to do uh, minus 27, and if we do it to that side, we do it to that side, and then we're going to get 33 uh, minus 27 is 6. That cancels out. And now we have x over 7 equals 6. Now, again, we're still doing the opposite. So in this case, we have x divided by 7. So the opposite of division is multiplication. So we're going to do multiply it by 7. And if we do it to this that side, we're going to do it to this side. And then so we're going to cancel those out. And then that just gives us x. And then 6 times 7 is 42. So our answer there for that first one is 42. So if you're thinking about what do I do when I have fractions, well, the key is, is just to do the opposite. Remember, combine like terms, do the opposite, perform the operation, and you get your answer. Let's move on to number two here. So number two is four times x plus eight equals four times two x minus seven. So we're distributing here. So four times x is four x bring that plus down, 4 times 8 is 32, 4 times uh, 2x is 8x, and then 4 times, uh, bring that subtraction down, and 4 times 7 is 28. So now, a lot of times students ask the question, well, which one do you first? Well, you always want x on this side, so I'm going to do the opposite by getting 8x and 4x together, but real quick before we go, Let's just identify what are likes. Um, so those are likes, and then these are likes. So that's what we're going to be combining uh, as we go. Um, so now uh, I'm just going to start with the 8x. So the, that's positive 8x. The opposite is minus 8x, minus 8x. So 4 minus 8x is minus 4x. That plus gets you dropped down, that 32 gets you dropped down, that cancels out, and that gives me a minus 28 over here. And then now I have 32, which is minus 32 and minus 32. So that 4x just drops down, and the minus uh, 
32 from a, a, a minus 28, that is going to give us a minus 60. Okay, and then now I'm down here still doing the opposite. X is multiplied by a negative 4, so now I'm just going to divide it by a negative 4. That cancels out. The negative divided by a negative is a positive, so that just leaves me with X. And then, of course, I did it over there, so I'm going to do it over here. Divide it by a negative 4. And then negative 60 divided by a negative 4 gives me a positive 15 because 60 divided by 4 is 15 and negative divided by a negative is a positive. So again, these are the intermediate, but you know, we always skill, right? So we do um, skill so that we can move on to the word problem. So the next uh, item is word problem. So now I want to show you this word problem here. So Mrs. Jones evenly divided the subway tokens she had over her seven students and gave them 27 bucks bus tickets each for a total of 33 transportation passes to each student. How many subway tokens did she have to divide is the question. So we know every single time we're doing our two-step process, identifying the question, and that question is how many, I'm just going to do S for subway tokens, ST, does she have, okay? And then state your path. Okay, so we know that she had to evenly divide however many subway tokens over seven students. So we don't know how many. That's the question. So the way we're going to express that is this many subway tokens over seven students, right? Because that's how we will find that number out. And then we also know that she gave them 27 bus tickets. So these are the tokens. And these are the tickets. And then we also know that we got a total of 33 passes. Total. Okay. So we have three pieces of information here. We have the tokens. We have the ticket for a total of 33. So if I add the tokens to the tickets, I should come out to 33. So I'm going to come over here and say X over 7. That's the tokens plus the tickets equal to 33 total transportation passes or items, however you want to call them. All right, so see, now here's what I want to show you. So this word problem, back it up, is exactly this problem that we set up over here. So again, when we do these videos every week, we want to make sure that you're making the connection with the skill over here with the word problem. So obviously I'm not going to work this problem out. I just did it on the previous slide. But again, we want to emphasize that skill and word problem are connected because ultimately this word might look very difficult, but look at the math that's involved in this word problem, right? All we're doing is subtracting uh, 27 from 27. You can do that. 27 from 33, you can do that. And then we're dividing or we're just multiplying 7 by x over 7. That just cancels out. That becomes 1x or just simply x. And then 6 times 42. So if you look at the math that's involved in these problems, it is very basic, very simple. But the key is, can you do this two-step uh, process? And on the GED test, that is essentially what they are testing you on. Not so much can you do those simple arithmetics and divisions that I just showed you on the previous slide, but that can you translate these words to this, right? And uh, in order to get your answer. And so, of course, we know the answer is 42 because we did it on the previous slide. Hope this helps. If you like this kind of content, please like it. Make sure that you subscribe and set your notifications. That way you know every time we post uh, these weekly videos to the channel. And again, remember, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to post them in the comment section in below, uh, the comment section below, and I'll get back to you.